Nuclear power brings prices down 75%. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, and let's check out this article about, well, how nuclear power has helped bring power prices down in Finland a crazy amount. Now, I'm not afraid of nuclear. Most educated people are not afraid of nuclear and appreciate the value that it can add to a, well, a stable, car- low-carbon energy production system. But there's a lot of fear about it, unwarranted, uh, probably Honestly, I'd say the Simpsons are part to blame for that, among many other things. So people will just normally be terrified of nuclear power. Like, well, like the hippie architect I worked with years ago that was terrified of her microwave. It wouldn't put anything in it. And I was trying to explain that the little metal cage there, you know, the, the size of those holes mean that the waves couldn't get out. And they couldn't understand that. There you go. This is what we're dealing with, everyone. Maybe you've got to pass grade 12 physics before you're allowed to um, have any opinions on (laughs) nuclear power. What do you reckon? Just as a bare minimum. So let's check this out because this is good news. This is encouraging news. Nuclear power helps bring down electricity prices by 75% in Finland. Wouldn't that be good? Imagine a 75% reduction in your power bill. Oh, I, I don't even know how I'd respond to that. So, the start of a much-delayed nuclear plant in Finland has helped bring down electricity prices by more than 75% in the Nordic country. The, I'm going to butcher this. Olkilutu 3, Europe's first nuclear plant in 16 years, began operating in April and is capable of meeting up to 15% of the country's power demand. Nuclear made up a third of Finland's total electricity generation in 2021. Average spot electricity prices in the country fell to 60.55 euro per megawatt hour in April from 245.98 per megawatt hour in December. A decrease of 75.38% according to Nord Pool, a physical electricity exchange. In December, Finland, which halted electricity imports from Russia over its invasion of Ukraine, was preparing to roll, uh, preparing for rolling power cuts due to high energy demand for heating during the winter. I mean, here's the the ironic thing is in many of these European countries that get much much colder than Australia, you're going to be living warmer than you are here. <laughs> I mean, you can see here I'm in my um, Eastern European style jumper, and I feel like I need some Adidas shoes and a cigarette. But anyway, you know, it's bloody cold right now. And I've worked with architects who've immigrated over from Germany. And they go, why is it so cold in Australia? These windows are only one pane of glass. It's insane. And just, it's a different world. And you can kind of put up with a bit of cold. It's good for you. Anyway, we've had more stability in the system because of OL3. It's a huge nuclear plant, one of the biggest in the world, Connected to a small system, it has its own risks, which we are happy to follow up on. Jaka Ruusuen, chief executive of Finland's national grid operator, FinGrid, has said. I mean, that's the thing. All of these things have risks, and you can manage the risks. You can minimize them. A nuclear plant is not going to go critical. It's not going to explode. It'll overheat, melt. You can manage it, and it's not the bloody... Not using 60s tech anymore and having you know, incompetent Soviets running things. There you go. Biggest um, nuclear disaster in the world. Lefties running the show, huh? They were probably all unionized party member workers, I bet. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, anyway. The 1600 megawatt Olikakuto 3 nuclear power plant joins two other reactors each with 890 megawatts of capacity at the site in um, Yurjori, Western Finland. Despite rising contribution of the nuclear power, FinGrid expects wind to be the largest energy source by 2027 amid rising investments. Now, let's just, uh, well, look at an example. Wind is a huge provider in, 
in um oh hang on wait a minute if i bring this up here wrong screen so wind is a huge provider of electricity here in australia well in victoria and let's jump over here and have a look right now this is the wind production or the wind paths and speeds in victoria right now and you can see okay it's pretty slow over the land let's have a look at the energy generation right now in the energy market we'll have a look here in victoria okay the, these look at the look at the maximum output of these wind farms and look at what they're actually producing right now at 6 30 in the morning you've got a 420 megawatt wind farm which is half that nuclear plant and it's only producing six percent of its output now because just the wind isn't there at this time of day this is why you need the nuclear to provide base load you can have a look here we've got a power station running at 90 percent got the old coal plants here still going still going punching them out there you go 500 megawatts 117 percent they're not putting on any of the little gas ones yet to kick in i guess they don't need it need it it's still early morning but there you go it's interesting just to see what's going on there we're not getting anything from solar yet at 6 30 you think you would a little bit a little bit maybe a bit further up if we have a look here we can see the energy production there nothing from solar yet still probably a bit too early but that's the advantage of having nuclear you can provide a consistent base load and hopefully the wind is kicking in when you need it and you don't have to build all these disposable batteries that have got a limited lifespan that you're going to use and throw away I, I don't know. It's, it has to be political. It really has to be political. Nuclear is not, is, uh, sorry, nuclear, it seems, is not very attractive for investors. This is what they say. But it's an option, and I'm sure that our politicians would be in favor of these decisions. Mr. Rusenin told the National on the sidelines of a media event in Helsinki. And then there's the business case, and who dares to put billions of euros into nuclear? Last month, the EU's energy minister held separate meetings to thrash out a common path on whether nuclear power should be incorporated in the bloc's renewable goals. It really should. The waste from nuclear power is scary to people, but it isn't like The Simpsons. You don't have Mr. Burns sticking it in a tree. It can be stored efficiently. It's already stored efficiently. It can be managed. The biggest risk... I would say from nuclear waste, is people getting access to it to make dirty bombs. And I mean, that can be that risk can be managed. So, France has historically invested massively in nuclear pro power programs. More than 70% of its electricity is derived from nuclear energy. The Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland are among EU countries that are pushing for nuclear power to be incorporated in the bloc's renewable goals. Last year, the European Parliament supported regulations of the EU that classify investments in gas and nuclear power plants as environmentally sustainable. In Finland, people appreciate everything that is carbon-free, and nuclear is carbon-free. No, it's not. It's not, guys. It's not carbon free. There is an embodied carbon in the, well, in everything. Everything has an embodied carbon or an embodied energy put into it. That's just the manufacturing of it. They, they seem to just focus on the actual generation of the power when they say carbon free. But to build a nuclear plant, that has a whole lot of embodied energy in it. To mine the uranium that you need and process it and transport it, where is it coming from? Is it coming from Australia? Could be. I, I haven't checked. But let's say if it is, the diesel burned in the ships, sending that over to Finland. That's pollution, that's carbon that's being released and used in this process. That all has to be taken account. You need to take account of cradle to grave, or hopefully cradle to cradle, but cradle to grave. So the lifespan of this infrastructure needs to take account of all of that. So there's going to be a few years where this power plant is running and it's not producing any carbon and generating the power but it's working off the carbon debt that it has that's been used in the manufacturing of the entire plant, the transportation of all the materials, all of that. Now, hopefully with a nuclear plant, they can have a extended quite a long lifespan. 
You know, you'd want these things to be designed 50 years, if not more. Now, the concern is with a lot of the renewable stuff, the lifespan may not be long enough. And the energy output, like the wind we saw there, it has to meet a certain percentage of its maximum output in order to achieve a net benefit. Because if, if the manufacturing and construction and mining, all of that embodied energy isn't worked off in the lifespan of the infrastructure, then you might, have, might as well have just used gas or existing infrastructure that you already have. And if you're destroying existing infrastructure, like destroying a power plant, blowing it up to build a new one that doesn't meet its target anyway, it's even worse. <laughs> so this is the thing that people don't seem to understand. You know, they go, trust the science, yada, 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 and fanatically going on and on about it. It's construction. This is construction. These are building projects. These are massive building projects that people are doing. And there's embodied energy to it. There's stuff ups. There's problems you've got to solve. You know, there's challenges in all of these projects. So you're kind of taking something that's already gone through that pain, destroying it and replacing it with something that has to be re-energized in 25 years, 20 years, 15 years, depending on the infrastructure. So that, that's why I'm a fan of nuclear. So anyway, that, that's rant over. But then there's the international discussions to make all these qualifications. Countries such as Japan and Germany shut down several reactors after Fukushima disaster in 2011, which severely dented public confidence in nuclear power. Well, here's the thing. The, the pollution was manageable. The water was treated. It was a freak situation of a, uh, what, a tsunami. It should, pro you know, the plant didn't blow up. It didn't go super critical, did it? Not that it could. You think it would improve people's confidence, but they don't. They don't get it. I mean, Thunderfoot has some good videos debunking a lot of the bullshit about it. People are terrified about the radiation coming from it in the water, and uh, it's it's just fear. This is the problem. It's just fear. It's no different to climate hysteria. It's no different to economic hysteria. We're just fear-driven organic little sacks, aren't we? We really are. Hormones and fear, that's the two things that get us going. And coffee. The FinGrid chief said that customers will need to be at the center of an electricity system based on wind and solar. The energy level of wind is constantly shifting due to fluctuating uh, the, due to the fluctuating nature of wind speed, he said. That's why we have to activate customers as well, and a lot of our vision is based on the flexibility on consumption, the storage battery, batteries, the flexibility from production, he said. Yeah, this means ruin your life. You've got to jump through a million bloody stupid hoops. You're going to buy batteries and put them on your home, which has a fire risk. Oh, batteries are not the solution. Do people really think it's the solution? We're not all going to be like off-grid preppers. Well, we were first talking about wind power, and 10 years ago, we talked about nuclear. Now we're talking about electrification and green transition. Yeah, nuclear is the only path you're going to be able to do that, to provide, provide a con continued, safe, constant baseload without the whims of the wind god. In 2021, fossil fuels comprised only 36% of Finland's energy supply, well below the International Energy a Agency's average of 70%. Finland aims to be the first developed country to reach net zero by 2023, uh, sorry, 2035. It will be driven by companies and private investors, and this is where we will go faster than our politicians can even imagine. We'll have to see. So there you go, everyone. Let's, um, well, let's have a bit of a talk about this one, eh? This is an encouraging video. It's showing you that nuclear power is bringing prices down. There you go, significantly. It's showing you a country that is no longer dependent on Russian energy imports. If only they would have listened to Trump back then. I'm, oh, I th is it only me, or do you expect this type of stuff to be common sense? But then again, I guess the average partner doesn't have any idea about physics. How, how many... 
you know what would be interesting would be to see the education level or just what subjects people did and how they vote. How many greenies do you think did physics at high school? I'm just trying to think about the type, you know, the, the stereotypical greens voter. I mean, if they did, they'd understand nuclear is fine. You can manage all the risks. I wonder. There's this whole push for renewables and net zero is politically motivated. It's very politically motivated. The push should be to have cheap, reliable, <laughs> dense power. You know, we shouldn't be building acres and acres of solar panels, destroying all the land. We shouldn't be putting wind turbines everywhere that you have to blow them up to pull them apart. This is going to be a nightmare to, uh, to manage all this infrastructure. We've got nuclear submarines now. Maybe it's time we got nuclear energy. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. It's certainly going to take a long time to happen. We just need to get a decent industry established. And then cheaper power for everyone. You've got no chance of having manufacturing in Australia running on wind turbines, guys. It's not going to happen. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out Heiser Bim or Heiser Does. And if you're a fan of the channel, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon, use our referral links, buy our pocket squares, or call us if you need an architect. Take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. I have to have a play at the new embodied carbon features of Rivet 2024. That should be interesting to have a look at. I might play with that now. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.